We are going to have church services here again tomorrow evening at 6.30 and then Sunday morning at 10.30. And also at noon tomorrow, we will be having a prayer meeting or prayer gathering for whoever wants to come. All are welcome. Well, hallelujah. It's good to see you all again. Or should I say hallelujah? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure what Jason said during worship. He said something and put a scripture, gave me some scripture to go by. So I wish I'd remember what you said. But anyway, kind of bad. But I'm going to turn to Isaiah 54 tonight. Isaiah 54. Does anybody need an offering envelope? Raise your hand and Joyce will run one to you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54, verse 9. Isaiah 54, verse 9. This is a scripture that kind of blew me away when I first discovered it. Because I always believe, because this, well, I'll read it and then I'll. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, which is talking about the flood. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. You know, when, after the boat settled and they got out and gave sacrifice, God put a rainbow in the clouds and said, every time you see this, every time we see a rainbow, we can remember that promise that God will not destroy the earth with the flood again. And here is comparing the same thing. As sure as we can take that to heart, right here he's saying that, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with you nor rebuke you. Just let that settle in a while. God is not wroth with you or will rebuke you. The same as he will not flood the earth again. So I just, I just want to continue on here. For the mountains shall... Depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. His kindness will not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my peace. A coven, he has a covenant of peace. And we read in the New Testament, Hebrews, it talks about comparing Jesus to Melchizedek, the prince of peace, the king of peace. We have that covenant through Jesus. Neither shall the covenant of, the, of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on you. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempests and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphire. And I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Great shall be the peace of... You know, I just feel like if you have some children that are out, not where they want to be, or here's a scripture to stand by. It's to speak over your children. Great shall be the peace of your children, and they shall be taught of the Lord. Verse 14, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear... And from terror, for it shall not come near you. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. Now here's this verse 16 that has, this goes, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. To me, that has always kind of challenged me on because some people would say, well, like I've heard, the devil is God's puff puppy. You know, he sends them. I don't know if anybody of you ever heard that term, but I believe that God created Satan, but what the scripture before and after shows us that he didn't actually create him to destroy. That's who he became. But he did create him as an angel, and exactly when, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, then we have verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. If something comes against you, we don't ask the Lord to condemn it. You condemn it. If you have something in your body, sickness or 
something coming against you, you condemn it. Use the name of Jesus. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Because this is a heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You know, our righteousness is of the Lord because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. Well, that's what I'm going to leave you all with tonight. So, um, oh, yeah, you'd like to stand up and raise our offering to the Lord. <laughs> kind of a new thing. I kind of forget about it sometimes. So praise God. So, Father, lift our offerings to you tonight, Lord, and bless you and worship you with them, Father. And I pray you'd bless each one back abundantly. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. You know, uh, some people don't like lifting their offerings unto the Lord. Well, it's good you weren't a Jew. And you had to have the wave offering. <laughs> Come into the temple and wave it before everybody in the Lord, right? Well, that's what they did. And... Uh, Thank God, uh, some of that's passed away, and and uh, and we're not under that. Aren't you glad? <laughs> the requirements it was required of them. We don't have the requirements now. We have what we call free will, right? And we willingly come and offer our things unto the Lord. Hallelujah! See, I got that. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, I think uh, without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. I believe the presence of the Lord is here to minister tonight. The presence of the Lord is here to speak. The presence of the Lord is here to, to um, flow through Bob and minister exactly what is needed for each one of us. So let's just say this together. Let's say, I am open to the Holy Spirit. My heart is receptive to what he, the teacher, has to say in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad that you can get receptive if you're not? Sometimes we get caught up with stuff during the day. But we can come in here, we can get into worship, get into the presence of the Lord. Our heart opens up and we can receive. Hallelujah. Bob, come on up here. It's been, I, I told Bob today, I said, how is it Friday? The week is gone. It's just been amazing how fast it went. Is that what it is? Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Colorado evening. What a gorgeous place on this planet you all live. I'm glad, glad uh, very blessed that you shared it with me this week. I've certainly enjoyed myself. I trust that you've done the same. I trust that you've grown in grace and knowledge. I trust that you've been strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit. I trust that the eyes of your understanding have been enlightened. I trust that the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of Him has gone deep within you and given you hope, which will bring you into a place of faith. And that faith that you carry, that faith that you have as men and women of God, that's how you overcome the world. Can you say amen? See, the Bible says that to have faith in God, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he encouraged his disciples to have the faith of God. And that faith you'll find in Genesis chapter 1, where God said, and it was. Can you say amen? I want you to see that you, my brother and sister, are the voice of the Lord in this season. You, my friend, are God's voice, and there's things that you need to speak. And then there's things you need to find some good old duct tape and stick it on your mouth and don't let it come out. Can you say amen to that? See, the power of life and death is right there on that rascal between your hairy chin, ladies. <laughs> no, I, 
I, I'm trying to get you to rear it up here a little bit, okay? <clears throat> Between your chin and your nose, if you, some, some people, I, I have a pretty large nose. You don't need to tell me that, but I know it myself. And I have a gray chin now. It used to be a different color, but it decided to turn on me, all right? And uh, I found it part of my biggest problem was that rascal that stuck between them called my tongue. Uh, I think some of you have gotten a hold of that, all right? And what you, what you need to do is get a hold of it once in a while and tell it what it's going to do, not let it tell you what it's going to do. Because, see, the power of life and death lays right there. And understanding, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's why you need to understand that it's crucial, and especially in the season that you and I are living in, that we feed on the right thing. We're going to get into that here today. I don't want to go too far because I, I felt like there was someone that needed this before I start going where I had planned, if the Holy Spirit lets me this evening. Uh, I want you to turn to First Peter chapter 5. You're going to say, oh, I know those scriptures. Oh, well, that's cool. It's one thing to know them. It's a whole other ball game to do them. Because, see, if we don't do them, what happens is uh, we're just, we've become self-deceived, the book of James tells us. I don't know about you, it's one thing for somebody to pull the wool over my eyes, but it's a whole other thing if I do, this, do that to myself. That's not very smart. Boy, you're all quiet in here tonight. You're allowed to shout, okay? You're allowed to say hallelujah. Okay, it's okay with me, all right? If you, some of you want to get up and dance, so you don't bother me, this guy a bit. But sometimes we need to shake things off our lives. Have you ever been there? Have you ever picked up so much clutter from the circumstances you've been involved in, from the problems that have taken place in your life or in the lives around you? Have you ever felt the weight of the whole world resting on your shoulders. I, I'm the only one in here, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. So we all pretty well qualify for that, because why? We have the ability, because we love people, all right? You, I, you know, I'm just assuming you do, okay? If you don't, you need to repent, all right? Because it is a commandment, it's not a suggestion, okay? And as Christians, we, we can pick up care, that does not belong to us. I know I've hit on it a few other times, but I just felt real strong about this this evening, is to encourage you, because why I love you, and I want you to rise up to the highest level that God has for each and every one of you individually, for your households, your families, your relationships, for the churches here, for the businesses that are represented here. God wants you to excel in this time. Can you say amen to that? But one of the things that will stop you, I, 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 uh, I hate to say this, but I, uh, probably nobody in here is dealing with this. I'm probably, this is probably something that I should be down the street in another church going over for them, all right? But I'm here, so you're just stuck with what I got, all right? It's called Pride. Just look ahead, smile, nobody will know, all right? Because when I seen this, I did, the, the dots didn't connect until the spirit of wisdom and revelation entered my mind and illuminated my understanding. Because, you know, pride, you can say, well, they're arrogant, you know, they're full of themselves, they're, you know, they just, uh, they know it all, whatever. I, I worked with a, a young man, he happens to be my pastor, and he was 18 when I met him, I was 28, I'd been in business, I'd been through life a little bit, and he was full of it. Some of you know Dale Armstrong, right? All right, and I honor him. His, thank God for Terry, his wife, all right? Thank God, she says, I have four boys. All right, she has three, all right, and then she raised Dale up too, all right? 
But see, a lot of times when you get a lot of knowledge, you can get puffed up with pride. And that's one of the things you're going to have to be aware of, because why? People will smell it on you. Do you understand? They'll smell it on you, and, and they'll shy away from it because they don't want to touch by it. Well, I watched him as he grew and, and you know, developed into the, into the awesome man of God that he is today, that that's not a problem today. But there, there was, I'm certain he had to fight some fights of faith in his life and resist that. Because why? He had the ability to, to read a book or to, to listen to a tape or, or whatever, and he, he would just, you know, his, his IQ's off the charts, so I'm to just tell you that. And a lot of times people that are very, very intelligent, and I'm just going to assume you all are, okay, just look ahead, just say, yeah, that's me, all right? Well, that was not my problem, okay? And not that I'm stupid, it's just that I... I wasn't a, a good student in high school, all right? I survived, I got through, and by the grace of God, which I didn't know anything about, I was able to graduate high school, okay? But I knew that I was just enduring to get through so I could go and do what I was passionate about, and that was business at that time. So, but a lot of people are readers and they're studious, and, you know, they, they love learning. I have a, a grandson who's an eternal student. He's in Russia right now. He speaks Russian plus Spanish and French. He's 24 years old. He's, he had, he, when he was 13, he looked at me and said, Granddad, I have three books in my head. I'm like, wow. So, you know, that's kind of the fruit that uh, my wife produced. Anyhow, <laughs> thank God for a good woman, guys. Can you say amen, all right? So what I'm saying is uh, a lot of times when you are studying, especially scriptures, and, I, and I'm just doing this to warn you, all right? I don't want this house to become stinking because you got revelation, you got knowledge, and it'll puff you up. There's a key to it, and that's to walk in love. Okay, and we're going to get into that. But I felt tonight to encourage, maybe, maybe, it's one, maybe it's just one person, and that's okay. It's in 1 Peter chapter 5, because a lot of, I see, I did not see that this was pride. I looked at, you know, arrogance and, you know, uh, somebody that got all puffed up because they had their head full of knowledge. And at the same time, I was just as prideful as Dale Armstrong was in another way. And, you know, thank God we've both grew, we've both repented, and we've got, you know, our wives helped us get out of it. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? And uh, I want you to see something. Do you find 1 Peter 5? This look at, here, this is a good one. I wasn't going to read this, but now I can. Verse 5, all right. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves... <laughs> unto the elder. Now, in this case, I'm older than probably most of you, okay? If I'm not, just assume I am, okay? Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with what? Huh. See, that's one of those things I was encouraging you last night with is we got to dress for the weather. <laughs> we got to dress for the climate. And we can't allow pride to take us out of the race that God has set before us. Because God is not a fan of our pride. Can you say amen? Now, as you look at this, it says, For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. As a pastor and in ministry, uh, a lot of things that I've seen, a lot of times I'm thinking, they're fighting a fight, but they don't know they're, they're fighting against God. God's a good God. And he's not holding any good thing back from any one of us. But we need, we need to know how to receive. Can you say amen? See, I, we're givers, but are we receivers? Oh, that's another message, isn't it? That's one, for one, that's one for the pastors to teach, all right? But see, you and I, we receive Jesus as Lord, but how about everything else that he has for you? Because see, this is a season, you need to be the full meal deal, you need to be the package that carries the presence of God with the fullness of God in this season. And pride will stop you, 
And it will, what it'll do is it'll trip you up. And you're going to start having resistance. And what I mean is God resists the proud, but He gives what? Grace to the who? Okay, I don't know about you. I need all the grace I can get. Why? Because I can't do this in my own strength. I can't represent the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the, the Christ, the one who was, is, and is to come, the Alpha, the Omega. I, I can't represent Him in my life without His grace. And I don't think any of you qualify to do that either. Can you say amen to that? And I think most of us understand that. But as I, as I looked at this, and, and the Lord put His finger on me, because why? This, he really dealt with me very strongly in, the, in that earlier season of my life in this issue. And He says here, He says, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Now, we all want to be exalted into our position of grace so we can take our place, okay? We all want to be developed into everything that God has created us to be. That's, that's normal. That's, that's a great desire. I want to be every... You, you understand me. I remember being, <clears throat> being 10 years old in Pennsylvania. You couldn't shoot a gun or go hunting. You could shoot a gun, but you couldn't kill anything. I like to kill stuff when I go hunting. Anyhow, I know some of you don't want to hear that, but I'm going to tell you anyhow, okay, because I'm a redneck from Pennsylvania, all right? But what I'm saying is, I remember at 10 years old, I couldn't hardly wait to be able to go hunting legally, even though I was doing it on the side when nobody knew, okay? And then I, was, I think it was about 13, and I was saving my money because I worked. Say work. It's not a bad thing, all right? I worked. Because why? I was going to have a car. Because I didn't like walking. Some of you know exactly what I'm saying. Bicycles are fine, but they're a lot of work. Okay? I want engine. All right? I want power. I want to go faster, okay, than my feet could or my bicycle could. So, at, at 13, 14 years old, I'm like, I mean, I'm like anxious to drive a car. We, I'm not legally able to. And my dad was 6'2", and put the fear of God in me all the days of my life, so I knew that there were certain things that I didn't go and do, because if I got captured, I don't know if I'd be here today, all right? I just, heads up. They believed in discipline uh, in my home. Uh, it, I think it was pretty legal back then. You understand? They didn't get arrested if I got a whooping, all right? But what I'm saying to you is what happened in, in, in the process of this is I had the ability to see where I wanted to be, and then I'd get anxious because I wasn't there, and I'd, I'd become a driver. i come, I'd become a pusher. I would push myself. I took that into my business life. I took that into, into ministry in the early years. I, I've tried to change that. It's one of those inward things in my life that somehow I picked up. But here's how, what happened. is In 1 Peter 5, 7, or in verse 6, it says, Humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, that in due time, say due time. So I don't want you to get stressed out, because why? Your due time could be today. All right, but it could be tomorrow, and it could be next week, and it could be six months from now. But I believe you're close to your due time. <laughs> and what I'm talking about, I'm talking about your God dream. I'm talking about your God desires. I'm talking about the things that He's put you here on this planet for to accomplish and to do and to start walking in. Why? Because why? I, we can't live in selfishness and fulfill the dream that God places in our heart. Are you with me? I said, you and I, we, we have been crucified with Christ. If you haven't been yet, this is a good night to make it happen. All right? It, uh, we'll, we'll nail you right up there with Him, okay? And what I'm saying by that is we've got to reckon ourselves dead and allow His life to live in us and through us because, see, that's what the world needs and that's what's going to change the world. So he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time He'll exalt you. Okay, I wanted to be lifted up or exalted or pushed forward before my time. Okay, in the natural. 
Now, I took a lot of my natural things, bad habits, into my Christian walk, and it didn't work. And that's why I'm sharing this with you, because I think there's someone here that's probably dealing with this. And then he says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be, be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary of the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. See, there I have scriptural evidence that it could be in this room. Now, back it up. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Okay, but back it up. It says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. What's the subject? Humility and pride. So he says the remedy for your pride, and here's where, I I mean, it blew my mind. You mean for me to carry my cares, that means I'm being prideful? Yes. Do you see that? In other words, God defines the pride that I was dealing with because why? I could take care of Bob. I got all my T's crossed, all my I's dotted. Oh, I got all my ABC's together, all my ducks are in a row. Hallelujah. See, your dependency's on Him. You and I weren't built to carry the load of the care, of the worry, of the concern, of the anxiety, of the stress that comes as you're doing life. If you need the wisdom of God, you've got to cast the care on the Lord and ask Him to give you wisdom so that you can be a co-labor together with Him and accomplish the success story at the end. That doesn't mean that you're, you, you're, you don't care. And what I mean by that doesn't mean that you're not concerned. But what it does mean is the concern and the care is not on you, it's on Him. And what it'll do is it'll lighten your load and it'll, it'll bring joy into your heart because you're not all stressed out all the time. You're not trying to make something happen that you can't make happen anyhow. You are, you've come to a place where you're totally dependent on the Lord. So I trust that's helped you. That's not at all what I wanted to talk about tonight, but I felt like there's somebody in here is going to get set free because Jesus said you're going to know the truth, and the truth's going to make you free. It's going to set you free. It's going to deliver you. So the entrance of his word will give you light, and you're going to see next time you're holding the care, and you're worried, and you're biting your fingernails, and you're like stewing, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? Oh, 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 and everybody gets around you, and it's like they don't want to be around you because you're a nervous wreck. Did you hear what the doctor said? Did you see this bill? I mean, it comes in all, sh- all shapes and fashions, and we all deal with it. But there's a place where, Father, you got my best interest. I'm giving you this mess, even when I have created the mess. Now, I know none of you, this, you're all too perfect here in Colorado, but we have made some messes and some lies back there in PA. All right? So, and I was one of them, so I, I was in, in route of self-destruction. Thank God that my Redeemer lives, and He loved me, and He delivered me from my self-destructiveness. But in the process of it, I come, and when I started serving the Lord, I, I mean, I, I'd get anxious for everything. Well, my Bible says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Why? So the peace of God could hold your heart, grip your mind, so that you could think on the right things. But see, the peace of God is the umpire of your life. You're either safe or you're out. are, Are you with me? I want you safe. I want you living underneath the shadow of the Almighty. I want you saying of the Lord, He is my refuge, my rock, my God. He's my high tower. He's my ever present help in time of need. I got angels charge over me. They're protecting me and keeping me in all my ways. No harm's going to come against me. No evil's going to fall me. No plague's going to come near my dwelling. Can you shout amen? amen? See, those are covenant words, and those are covenants, uh, are the covenant for the children of God like you are. And like God's not holding that back, but you got to take it by faith, and then you got to do the word. Say, do the word. Well, in this word that I'm sharing with you right now before we jump into our message tonight is cast all your care upon the Lord. Amplified says casting it once and for all, 
for he cares about you affectionately and watches over you watchfully. I like one brother, he would teach it, and he'd say, it's like fishing. He says, you get your, you, you get your bait on there, or your, whatever you're using, and you cast it out, and he says, that's your care. He says, cut the line. Does that make sense to you? All right. I'm encouraging you. Let God take care of it. Ask Him for wisdom so you can do your part and be a co-labor together with Him. And you're going to find out that a lot of the problems, a lot of the stress, a lot of the anxiety, a lot of that what are we going to do now is going to leave. Because that peace, which is your umpire, is going to hold your heart and your mind in that perfect peace because your mind is fixed on Him because He promised you if you'll keep your mind on Me, I will keep you in perfect peace. That peace will make the devil nervous. The devil will overplay his hand. You're going to rise up atop of that because why? God wants to exalt you in due time. And I believe this is the time of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be lifted up so the glory of God can fill the temple of God and the manifestations of God's glory can flow through the lives of God's people. And you might as well shout amen because I know this is true. I hope that helped you. I love you. I'm going to miss you. I'd say, I'm a leaving on a jet plane. No, I'm not. I'm going to drive. I think they're on strike, aren't they? What are they doing? What a mess. And you were born for such a time as this. You were born to straighten messes out, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You were born to solve problems. You were born to grab witty ideas from the heart of the Father, bring them into earth. You were born to be a representation of, of the King of Glory in this day. Who, who, who will open up their hearts and allow the King of Glory to come in? I don't know about you. I'm going to open mine up because I need all of Him. How about you? Amen. Well, I want to talk about, I've been two days trying to get here. And uh, I want to talk about the shift to the God desire, and then I said it begins here. What we're talking about this evening, it begins here. And that's the shift of your eyes. Your eyes have to shift off of what you focus on to what God wants you to focus on, because if you can shift your eye, you can connect with your heart to the right thing. Does, does that make sense to you? I want you to shift your eye and look at the right thing. And we're going to go over Scripture because why? I believe you're hopesters. I, I've shared that with you. You're men and women that can restore hope back into a society that is absolutely hopeless in so many areas. They don't see light at the end of the tunnel. That the spirit of the enemy has hit our generation and has bombarded them. And understand, they're try, you know, the devil's trying to take our freedom away from us here in America. You know that. I'm not getting into politics here. But what I will say to you is we've got to stand for freedom because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And I want the Spirit of the Lord in my nation. I want it in this church. Do you understand me? And he's here. But we've got, uh, we've got to enlarge our capacity and believe God for more than just us four and no more. Can you say Amen. Because why? There's people out the, outside of these walls going to hell if they don't have Jesus. And we still have a commission. I, it's not a good suggestion. It's a commission. It's an assignment. It's what we're born for. That's to populate heaven and plunder hell. That's, you are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, neither of the name. And there's no other name given among men where people can be saved by. Well, the last thing I knew, he named you after himself. Are you Christians? <laughs> Is Christ in you? Is Christ in you the hope of glory? Is greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? Oh, amen. I'm in the right church. Glory to God. There for a while I was thinking I was in the wrong place. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are you okay? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you. The entrance of your word tonight will bring light and illumination in each and every one. Lord, I thank you that pride's out the door in every one of our lives. We're not going to carry the care. We're going to ask you, we're going to ask you to give us the wisdom to deal wisely with all the affairs of life. 
So, Father, we thank you when we pray. We pray in faith, and we believe we receive when we pray. So, Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you that comes upon each and every precious one in this congregation tonight. Lord God, that you flood them, that you fill them with the knowledge of your will tonight in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So, Father, that they can walk worthy of you and be fully pleasing under the good works that you've called each and every one of us to in this season in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. So connect with your heart. Shift your eye, connect with your heart. God's going to release, I'll just prophetically say this to you, in many of your lives, you're going to have dreams. Prophetic words are going to come to you. Inward unctions of knowing, that inward witness. Part of that's going to be with new inventions, witty ideas, business opportunities. Some of you are going to have dreams and see yourself on mission fields. You're going to see faces that you don't recognize in some of those dreams. Some of those faces might be different colors than what you are. God's going to prepare many in this room, even tonight, for mission assignments. God's going to raise up ministers underneath this ministry, Jay. Ron. I mean men and women that are going to be runners of the season, that are going to carry the gospel into other areas. See, there's an apostolic anointing on CWI on this house. And Ron, because you're connected to them, you got it too, brother. And I know you got it anyhow. But what I'm saying is that that's a, a father's heart to understand that we, we have a responsibility to disciple and train and help people raised up into what God has called them to be. That's why God set fi the fivefold ministry into the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers, so that we could cooperate together with heaven, with God, with the Father, and deliver our ministry to the body so that the body could do the work of the ministry. Can you say amen? See, the work of the ministry needs to be accomplished before the end comes. And we are an end-time church. Are you with me? That's not to scare you. That's like, man, you ought to be excited. God chose you for such a time as this. And I believe he saved the best till last. So when I look at you, I'm thinking, wow, we got some wild ones here, Lord. I'm, a, I'm excited. You remember David's army? They were a mess. Some of us was a mess. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for being born again and becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank God for the old being passed away and behold the new has come. Thank God that you and I are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God that you and I are filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Thank God that we have been crucified with Christ. It's not us who lives any longer but it's Christ who lives in us and the life that we now live in the flesh. We live by the faith of the Son of God who loves us and gave himself for us. I don't know about you. I'm excited about that because I'm not on my own ride. I'm no longer driving the Hemi that I used to when I was 16 years old. I give him the steering wheel. <laughs> Some of you need to do the same thing. Amen. I love you. What well, don't sound like it. <laughs> I, I have a message. I don't know when it's, I'm going to. It's what does love have to do with it? Huh? Well, we're going to find out. You hang out with me in the next couple of days. You're going to find out what love has to do with it because it has everything to do with it. Can you say amen to that? So in, in, in second, or second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, wherefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. Now, some of you in here know exactly what I'm talking about, all right? Some of you haven't caught up to that. You haven't had to go through stuff yet, but you hang out on the planet long enough, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to overwhelm you. But it says here, he says, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. We're talking about your spirit man. 
See, you're a triune being, you're a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Your body's your earth suit. You need your earth suit to be on the planet, all right? So that's why you got to take care of yourself. Can you say amen to that? All right? But the cool thing is, is your spirit has been born again. It's been born above but when you receive Jesus Christ. So you're a new creation, one that never was before. Isn't that cool? Amen. You're not the you you used to be. You're the new you. Hallelujah. You are from another planet, church. Can I rattle your chain? You're the ambassadors of heaven. Amen. You represent a whole other kingdom. That's why that you can't connect with the world system. That's why you find yourself disagreeing with some of the things that are going on. Because why? You have the mind of Christ. And you are a heavenly ambassador of heaven living in this earth, sojourning in this earth for this season. And I'll tell you what, this nation needs you. Do you hear me? I said, this nation needs you so full of the Holy Ghost and so full of power, so full of the wisdom of God, and so yielding to the Holy Spirit in your life, and so walking in the footsteps that He's already ordered for you, and so being sensitive to the Spirit, not, not, uh, not, not fulfilling the lust of your flesh, but walking in the Spirit, in the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? See, that's a challenge to every one of us, and we all can do this. He says here, he says in verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, say that, I'm not going to look at the things that I see. Now, what I mean by that is the circumstances can overwhelm you at times. Problems can weigh you down. Understand, when you see things that, wow, how did that happen? You know, I, I've, I've lived on the planet long enough, and some of you have too, that I look at some of this, the, the affairs in our nation, and I'm like, man, I never dreamed I'd see some of the stuff happening that's going on right now. Never dreamed of it. Just the morality, just the morals of our nation. You know, I, I thought if some, if some of our grandparents were alive, they, they, they couldn't handle it. But see, we've been allowed to sleep, and the enemy has come in and taken out the fabric of what we stand for as a nation. Now, somebody's got to take back what the enemy stolen, and that's why we've got to live in constant revival. I'm not talking about a revival meeting. I'm talking about you so fired up with the Holy Ghost and power. You understanding that you're anointed for this day and this hour. You understanding that God has called you out of darkness in the light. And you are the light of the world. You have the answer to all humanity's situations and problems. Because you're the carriers of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're the carriers of the same Spirit who raised Him from the dead. And if He can deliver Jesus Christ from the dead pull him up out of the grave, he can pick you and me up out of our messes that have tried to kill us, but also he can use you to deliver the power of God to a generation that is dealing with a hopeless hopeless situation. You're dealing with a generation that doesn't know what right from wrong is, a a generation that is confused. They don't even know if they're man or woman. I mean, dear God, look where we are. I hope I can preach like this because why? We've got to understand we have an assignment. We've got to bring restoration and recovery to a nation that God's not finished with. I said He's not done with America. And the, thing, the answer, you know, pray for your government. Please pray for your leaders. I mean, that's Scripture. You know that. But bless God, we've got to take responsibility as a church and understand this is our season. This is the time for us to rise up and, cha- and change the nation. This is up for us to shift into our positions of grace. It's up to us to understand that the spirit of repentance wants to fall on the United States of America and the, the Holy Ghost wants 
wants to manifest so that we see the awakening, that third great awakening, which I believe is here, and we've got to see it ushered into our cities, into our states, into this nation once again, so that why? This nation can acquire and do what God's hand has been upon it since the foundation of it. Does that make sense to you? See, I believe there's some nation changers in this room. Do you understand me? I believe you all have the potential to be one. But God's going to call, and He's going to put a warrior spirit in many that I'm speaking to. And what I mean by that, you're not fighting flesh and blood. But there's principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Are you with me? You are mighty, mighty men and women of God. Each one of you. I I trust that that goes from here to here. Meditate on greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Meditate on it. I'll give you a little side journey. I don't know why I do so many side journeys here. I went to see a preacher by the name of Bob Yandian up in Erie, Pennsylvania. I was a youth pastor at the time. I was growing and developing. And in Erie, Erie's a, a larger city than what I lived in. And it's not that I'm a timid or afraid of people type guy. But I remember we were go- walking to this church. We had to park a couple blocks away. And we were walking there. I was with a friend of mine. And we were walking there. And I looked down this alley and I seen some street people camped out down this dark alley, and it was dark. And I felt the Lord said, go down there and bless them. I knew what he meant, give them money. So what I did was, I told my friend, i got to go down here. Well, did you ever have the spirit of fear come on you? Now, all of a sudden, it's like you got feelings that you didn't know you had. Because why? The devil is the spirit of fear. So he tried to get me, intimidate me, lie to me, and deceive me, what he does, by the spirit of fear coming upon me so that I would turn around and go back. Immediately, 1 John 4 and 4, rose up in me, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I walked down that dark alley, and there's those folks were, and I knew it was not a sweet crowd. Can I tell you that, all right? They were not like, you know, mom and dad, and they just didn't have a place to stay, all right? They were up to no good. I walked down, and I'm all the time meditating, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Say that with me, church. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Okay, who's in you is Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. Just so you understand that in case you didn't. So I'm walking down there. By the time I get down there, there was a whole group of them. There's some of them are in the, in the dark and you couldn't see them. And I, I, I had the money in my hand and I knew I was to bless the one brother or the one man. And I walked in and I felt like I was about 10 foot 10. I wasn't, but God let me see how big he was inside of me compared to what I was doing. Well, you know, some of those folks come to church that night. It was awesome. I don't know how well they're embraced because not all churches can embrace people like that. I hope you can. I'm not a respecter of persons personally, <laughs> you understand me? And uh, what I what I seen was that changed me. I went to be a blessing to them and show them the love of Jesus is all I was doing. Fear tried to grip me and stop me from, from my mission that I, I knew the Holy Spirit was encouraging me to do. And I had to resist the fear. I had to resist the devil. And the greatest way to resist him is to meditate on the Word and then speak the Word. And God allowed me in the Spirit to experience how big he truly is. 
I felt like a giant among little, little people. Not that they were, but I felt like a giant. There was no fear by the time I reached out and ministered to those folks. I don't know. I, I trust that helps some of you. You okay? I'm going to miss you when I go home. Y'all hungry. Verse 17, it says, For our light affliction is but for a moment, and work is for us an exceeding eternal way to glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Say temporary. Okay, your problem right now that you're dealing with, your situation that you're dealing with, understand, it's temporary. It is subject to change. What the devil meant for your harm is about to be turned around for your good. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? That's the God that we serve. The uh, New Living Translation says, That is why we never give up, verse 16, Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last long. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? It says, Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen, for the things which we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Now, shift the eye and connect with the heart. Go, go with me to Psalm 123. Say, shift the eye, connect with my heart. Psalm 123, verse 1. Unto you I lift up my eyes. Who are you looking at? The Lord Jesus. Now remember, John 1 and 1, if I can just encourage you with that. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You and I don't separate God from His Word. You understand me? In other words, when I, when I, when I feast on this... I'm with him. You understand me? I want you to see the same way as you're only as good as your word is. I'm only as good as my word is. Well, I've come to find out that his word will not return unto me void. It'll accomplish that what he pleases, and it'll prosper in the thing where unto he sends it. I come to find out that God's not a man that he would lie. Amen. There's one thing I can stand on, and that's the word of the Lord. Can you, and you can too. So as we look at this, I want you to see, unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hands of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord, our God, until he have mercy on us. And if you if you search that out, you're going to find it says, until he shows favor on us. Do you know? that you're already New Testament believers and you're highly favored of the Lord. Do you know that according to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, that he hath blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places? Do you know that you're already blessed? You're not going to get blessed, you are blessed. Okay, the thing of it is, is you've got to start believing that you're the blessed of the Lord. You're the favored of the Lord. That grace gives you favor with God, and if you'll be faithful, understand that the Bible says that love and faithfulness will give you favor with God and man. In other words, God, when you walk in the realm of the where the Lord has you, He can even make your enemies like you. And they're just like, I don't know what it is, I just want to bless them. Where two weeks ago, they wanted to take you out. I'm telling you, it's, I've lived it. I've seen it. I'm like, I, I've seen hearts change. Because why? I'm going to be a man of love. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in the Spirit. I'm going I'm to keep my life fixed upon the Master Himself. And as I do that, love and faithfulness will give me favor with God. And I want favor. I want to walk in favor. How about you? See, favor will open up doors where nothing else can. 
Favor will produce prosperity in your life where it seems like you struggle and struggle and all of a sudden the favor of God opens up and you got more business and you know what to do with. You're, you're, you're getting witty ideas and they're coming or you just know, I know how to invest. I know when to take out what I've invested. Are you with me? See, I want you to understand you were born to prosper. My master is a Jew just in case you didn't know, all right? As I was in business, in the, in the grocery meat market business, and I grew up in it, many of the people that we bought product from back then were Jewish. It, in my eyes, they were a bit strange. They come from another community, not, not in the Titusville area as much. They come from a place they called Oil City in Franklin. And they would come in and they would sell us different things that we would sell in our market. And I come to find out, these old boys knew how to make money. They had something going on. Now understand, as far as I know, I wasn't born again back then. And I don't think they knew Jesus. If they did, it didn't show. They, they, were, they were Old Testament believers, okay? And what I mean by that, they knew the law. But... Part of that is in Deuteronomy, I believe it's 8, it says he gives you the power to obtain wealth to establish his covenant. Understand, they knew how to work the system, they knew how to operate in business, and they were all successful. Well, after I got born again, I've come to find out that I, I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, and he's the king of the Jews. Wow! This, and some of you business people in here, the lights ought to come on. You're hooked up to headquarters. All right? If you're thinking, you know what, I want to see my business go into, a, into another realm, I want you to know if you got a hotline like I told you last night, like that red phone that Batman had to headquarters, you got, as you pray in the Spirit, as you believe God, He can download things into you that will take you and excel your business. It'll excel your ability to prosper because God's not broke. Are you with me? See, religion will try to hold you down, depress you, and keep you, keep you in, in a place where you're not walking in the potential that God placed inside of you. But you've got a greater one inside of you, and he is still the king of the Jews. Aren't you glad that he engrafted you and me into the vine? Aren't you glad that he didn't leave us Gentiles without hope? Aren't you glad that he crossed the line? Because why? The Jews didn't accept him. So thank God for the Apostle Paul who went and preached the gospel to us. Hallelujah. But we've been engrafted. So I'm looking at a lot of adopted Jewish kids. Boy, that'll just blow some of your mind. You understand me? I, I want you to see it. See, you were born for success the same way in the natural. I've seen them successful with a lot of the other vendors and a lot of the other people that we bought product from didn't, didn't last long because it was not an easy way to make a living. One of them had a, had, had a pop company. You guys probably call it soda. Pop. Soda. What, what else do you call it? Soda. Bacon soda? No. <laughs> all right. <I'm, laughs> you know, all know what I'm talking about, all right? Pepsi, Coke, all that. Well, this was call, called Ma's Root Beer. And they had all kinds like cherry and orange and everything. And I mean, I watched this guy excel. Excel when back then it was like everything was Coke and Pepsi. But he was Jewish. And he knew how to work it. And he excelled when Coke and Pepsi was trying to take over the whole market. But he excelled. Why? Because he had the Word of God in the Old Testament on how to do business and how to prosper. And that Word still worked. See, the laws of God work. Gravity still works. Amen? Seed time and harvest works. Amen? Forgiveness works. Yeah, amen. I won't go there. So we look at this, and he says, it says, So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us or shows us favor. And I want to encourage you, this is now. 
I, I want to see the favor of God on every one of your lives, on your families, on your businesses. I want to see it rise up. All of a sudden, you're just walking in a realm that maybe you've never experienced before, and that's called the goodness of God in the land of the living. That you, you, you probably sang songs, but, oh, come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, they'll not lack any good thing. Can you say amen to that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on under your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your, your pathway. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. Can you say amen? Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. And that's what this is all about. I want you to come into understanding that what I want is I want His desires. My desires will be taken care of when I take care of His desire. When I do the God thing, God will take care of my back door. Does that make sense to you? See, I want you to understand. You, you seek ye first the kingdom of God and His way of doing things, and He's going to get the stuff to you. <laughs> oh, glory to God. When He gets the stuff to you, He is still El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. He's not like beggarly, oh, we'll just make it. We're just going to get through the week. Not my dad. How about yours? And he wants us to rise up and to think just like he does. Can you say amen to that? Now, to look, I'm going to give you a little definition just in case you've skipped that grade in school. Look means focusing the eye towards something. Okay, that's pretty good. So regard is to show regard to something, it means to pay attention to. See, one of the keys for me, I quit school in 11th grade I uh, was going into the military. The military decided they didn't need me, and uh, I had some health issues. I was born as an asthmatic. Thank you, God, that you have delivered me and healed me. So me and my friend, we bowed out of school, went down to sign up. They took him, and they said goodbye to me. I had to go back home. And like I said, my dad, people used to think he was John Wayne's twin, all right, so he was a pretty good-sized guy, and he was pretty gruff, and his voice was pretty rumbling, and uh, I, I, he had fear in my life, and so he said, son, you're either going back to school, and I knew the alternative was he's going to kill me. I don't think he really would have, but I would have probably wished I was dead, all right? So the, the, I decided, well, that's, I, I guess I'll just go back to school, because the military won't have me. Well, up to that time, I had gotten by by the skin of my teeth if I had skin in my teeth. In other words, I skated through, all right? And, you know, I got enough grades to go into the next grade, but it wasn't that I was getting anything. Well, what happened in that year after I dropped out of school, I grew up. Say grow up. I learned how to pay attention. <laughs> See, before, I would be sitting in class, but I was out on the stream fishing. Or I was up in the woods shooting something, all right? Or I was playing baseball, or I was doing football. I'd be sitting there in class, and it's like my mind wasn't connected with what was going on, all right? Now, I know none of you guys have that issue, all right? But there are, there are people that do, okay? And I was one of them. So I wasn't connected to receiving by paying attention. In that year, somehow, something must have changed in my life. I went back to school. I graduated in the top ten of my class. Now, understand, it wasn't because I studied hard. It wasn't because I read any more. It wasn't because I worked any harder. No, I learned how to pay attention. So when I talk about looking, I'm talking about paying attention to what you're looking at, all right? So I want to help you to focus on the main thing because if you can learn how to pay attention to the main thing, you can take care of all the rest of the mess in your life and the lives of others. So in, as I look at this, it, looking, Mr. Vines, E.W. Vines says this, to look away from one thing so as to see another, to consecrate or gaze upon. So in other words, I would start looking at actually what the educator was trying to educate me with, 
instead of looking and seeing a fly rod in my hand. <laughs> because that's what I used to see. You understand? It's like, I don't want to be here, so I'll just daydream as they go through whatever they do to try to educate me. But I, I changed my focus. See, I want you, you know, some of you folks have got to shift to change your focus. Are you with me? Now, go with me to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Where does time go in this church? Are you guys okay? I know I'm long-winded, but I got the breath of life in me. Hallelujah. Amen. And you do too. Isaiah 45, verse 22, if you'll turn there, please. Look unto me and be saved. That word saved is yesha in the Hebrew. It means to be free. It means to defend. It means to deliver. It means to help. It means to preserve. It means to rescue. It means to be saved. It also means to be delivered, to be liberated. It means to be saved in battle. It means to be victorious. It means to save from moral troubles. It means to give victory to. All right, let's just focus on God wants you to have victory in every area of your life. All right? So, if I look at that, it says, look unto me, God speaking, and be victorious. Thank you. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Woo, can I get an amen? <laughs> All the ends of the earth. God still loves people. It says, for I am God and there's none else. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. Say, shall not return. Now, here's the key, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear allegiance. Now, New Testament says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, the key is, I believe you all have, if you haven't, please don't leave this house without doing so, that you've already willingly bowed your knee and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. All right, so you come out of darkness into light, you've been born again, you're children of God, right? So you have, you have the children's benefits. Amen? So, I want you to just go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, I'll try to be quick here. Well, I didn't realize it was that late. Huh. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore we also, since... We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Say that with me. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, consider him. Focus on him. Shift the eye, connect your heart to what he's got to do and what has to say to you. Now this isn't just for a service. <laughs> this is for the rest of your life. What I'm sharing with you is, is, is the way to live a victorious life in Christianity. A way for you to maintain a life that has been revived, that is carrying revival everywhere you go. Are you with me? See, I want you to understand you were created for such a time as this to carry the presence, the power, the anointing of God to a generation that is hopeless. The anointing you carry can break yokes, remove burdens, and set captives free. Don't underestimate who you are as the church. I've told you many times since I've been here, Jesus Christ said, I'll build a church. That means you and me. I'll build you, I'll edify you, I'll build you up. Why? With the spirit of revelation. 
And how he does it, he says, then the gates of hell are not going to prevail against you. In other words, the powers of hell can't take you out because you have something inside of you that's been built by the eternal God. And he's a greater force than any devil, any circumstance, anything you come up against. And I want you to get it from here your head into your heart. So that why? The spirit of fear and intimidation and lies and accusations and deception no longer controls your life. Because you're a man and woman of God with an anointing of God, with the wisdom of God, with everything that God has. He's placed inside of you, church. Understand, you are a force to be reckoned with on the earth today. You are the men and women of God who can carry the gospel of Jesus Christ and usher people out of darkness into light and bring health and bring wealth and bring prosperity into a generation that has lost their hope in the plans of God. Can you shout amen to that? Amplified says, looking away, looking away from all that will distract. Looking away from all, say all, that will distract to Jesus who is the leader and the source of our faith giving the first incentive for our belief and is also the finisher bringing it to maturity and perfection see God's trying to perfect us mature us and perfect us he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross. See, we were called to pick up our cross and follow him. Is that correct? Despising and ignoring the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. Just think on him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials. Let me read that one more time for you, all right? No matter what you're facing, church. Understand the price that he paid to redeem you so you could be a part of the great family of God. Understand that he became your sin who knew no sin so that you and I could have a right relationship with God the Father. Understand that God so loved the world that He sent Jesus Christ, and Jesus is in love with the church. He's in love with you. You're His bride. Can you say amen? So He says, reckon up and consider it all in comparison to your trials so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. Shift your eyes on the truth and make the decision tonight to look away from the lies of the enemy who's been lying to you. Your light affliction is just for a moment. It's working for you a far more and exceeding eternal way to glory. While we, you and me, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The things which are seen are temporary. The things which are not seen are eternal. That word eternal means unchangeable. It means existing at all times without change as eternal truth. Valid. Hebrews 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the same Yesterday, today, and forever, eternal. I want you to know when you embraced Him and you received Him, you received eternal life. You're going to live forever. Hallelujah. This is all temporary. And it's subject to change. And you got an anointing to bring change to the atmosphere of this nation. I said, you, church, have an anointing to bring change, to bring the shift, to bring the change, to bring the revelation of God, and to bring it into the right, proper balance that needs to take place for the harvest to come out of darkness into light. You, my brother and sister, have the, have the powerhouse of the Holy Ghost. You have the spirit of life inside of you. You don't need to be revived. You've got revival. Can I say that? 
that. Understand, I'm going to call things that be not as though they were. This is a house on fire. Hallelujah. This is men and women of God that are a threat and terror everywhere they go. These are men and women of God that are so full of the love and compassion of Jesus Christ that everywhere they go, it oozes out of them and they never fail because love never fails. And as he is, so are they in this house as God is. God is love and you are too. Can you shout amen to me? I'll read this one more. I, I don't know what I do, but I have like tons of stuff to give you. But I, I've come to the conclusion, when I, when I sense it, I, I've got I to stop because I, I know you can only eat so much when you come to the table. And if you overstuff yourself, you end up burping it out. All right, I don't want you to burp it out. I want you to be, now I know this is gross, but I think most of you can understand it because I've seen a cattle market down here. Be as smart as an old cow. Eat the hay, spit out the sticks. But the hay that you eat, the Word of God that you eat, swallow it and burp it up a little bit, chew it up some more, all right? Swallow it again, burp it up a little bit, and then, you know, chew it up. See, I want you, the Scriptures that we've thrown out to you over this week, I trust that you've taken notes. I trust that you'll listen to it. I, it you don't understand. I know I go fast sometimes. But see, prophetically speaking to you, the entrance of that word brought light in your life. I know it did. I, the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of Him that's flowed in this room and in this, in, in this atmosphere has brought, it's challenged you. I know it has. I know it's brought you into a, a shift in your thinking in areas of your life. I know it's brought change in your life. And what I mean by change is, you know what, this, this isn't working what I've been doing. I believe God's got a better plan for me. I believe He has a hope and a future for every one of us. Can you say amen? But see, I'm not going to get revived. I am revived. And that's one of the shifts I want you to see. I want you to see that you're a house on fire. Do you understand me? I, what I mean by that is my Bible says he makes his ministers as a flame of fire. Well, as I'm looking out over you, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you are the ministers, the ambassadors of heaven sent to earth. Your assignments are all different. I understand that. Your anointings are all different. Your calls are all different, and that's cool. Because why? You can reach people that nobody else can. You can go into zones, into areas that maybe nobody else could even enter the usher or enter into the doorway. So when you show up, I want you to be full of the Holy Ghost, full of the fire of God, full of the passion of Jesus Christ, understanding that the gifts of the Spirit are readily available to the church of Jesus Christ. There's nine gifts. There's, there's the power gifts, there's the vocal gifts, and, and there's the revelational gifts. And understand that, that that comes in the package of the Holy Spirit. And the, the Spirit of God will work as He wills. Well, the cool thing, He has to have a willing heart to work with. And that's why we're dealing with the heart. That's why your heart has to connect. you got to look away from the circumstances, the pressure, the problem, the popular opinion over the United States, what they might be saying, and understand what God's saying. I'm not done with this nation. I'm not done with the United States of America. My hands still rest upon this nation. There's an assignment on this nation to take the gospel to the nations of the world. And bless God, we've got to do that what we've been called to do as a nation. We are free. We're free Americans. We're not bound up, and we've got to maintain our freedom. And who's going to do it if the church don't do it? If the church bows their knee and lets the devil take their freedom, woe unto the church of Jesus Christ. But I want to hear, I'm going to be a preacher, and I'll preach this as long as I live, that you are the changing force, you are the shifting force, and you are the rearranging force that this nation needs today. So it's time you shake yourself off of all the things 
things that have held you down, the care, the, 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 the mess that we've cluttered up our lives with, and just be like my dog and just shake it off. Do you understand me? Shake it off and get everything that he has on you and be robed with the robe of righteousness. Be clothed with the new man. And as you're clothed with him, you get yourself filled with the Holy Ghost and stay filled with the Holy Ghost and understand that there's a song in you and if you lose your song you go back to the spout where the glory comes out and you get refilled up again because when you give out you empty out and when you're empty out you fill up can you say amen you fill your car up to keep going fill your life up fill your life up with the word of God fill your life up with the spirit of God fill your life up with the love of Jesus fill your life up with fellowship one with another encourage you one another bringing bringing songs of deliverance to one another. Understand, you're the body of Christ, and God has a call on every one of your lives. It's not like some of us. No, God wants every hand on deck to take over and take charge in the name of Jesus. Could you shout amen in this house? Amen. Let me settle down just for a minute, because if he's done, I'll go sit down over there. And uh, if he isn't, I'll obey him. St stand up. I'm going to just lead you through a simple confession. Put your hands in your midsection, if you don't mind, and just say this with me. If, not that you're a puppet. I just want to encourage you with the word. Say, Heavenly Father, this temple that I'm holding on to is your private property. This temple has been bought with a price of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, you have total ownership of this being. I submit my will to you. I'm asking you that your will will be done in me and through me. I consecrate, I dedicate my life solely to your will. Open up my understanding in a clear way to see you. As I look to you, you started this deal and you're going to finish it one day. So in the process, I will keep my eyes fixed on you, Lord Jesus, upon your truths, Lord Jesus, and I will walk by faith and not by feelings, not by emotions, not by circumstances, and not by the opinions of others. I will walk in the spirit of truth, I will walk in the Spirit. I will not fulfill the lust of my flesh. I will walk in the Spirit of life and reveal life and release life everywhere I go. Thank you, Lord. I'm a house on fire. Thank you, Jesus. Two things that uh, I'm going to share. There's somebody here that refused to say the things Bob said here right at the end. I don't know who it is, so don't run out on me. <laughs> but there's somebody here that refused it. And I want you to go home and ask why. I just want you to ask yourself why. And then there was also somebody here <laughs> that truly meant what they really said. And, and I'm not saying generally, I know a lot of us were talking, so that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm saying there was somebody here that opened up their heart and said, you know what, that's me. And I truly want it all. And I'm telling you, there's a reward for the one that does that. And there's not reward for the one that refuses. 
And the amazing thing about it is it's up to us. <laughs> so if it was you that refused, you can fix it. It's good news. It's not condemning news. It's not to point the finger at you. It's not, it's not to put you down. It's just simply you can fix it. But I do want you to ask yourself why. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for the ones that meant it. And there may be more than one. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying what the Spirit of the Lord dealt with me. But thank you, Jesus, for the ones that meant it from the bottom, from their spirit. Because those are the people God can use. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at these young, on fire youth. I mean, give it to them. They can't keep their mouths shut. You should have heard them the other night after the service. Like it went like three octaves louder in here, I think. Well, you just take that right into Walmart, City Market, Safeway, the highways and the byways of Delta, wherever you work, and you just tell them Jesus is Lord and he's a good God. Hallelujah. Well, tomorrow we're going to have prayer at noon again. I know it's Saturday, uh, but we're going to have prayer at noon, and uh, we're believing for great things for tomorrow night. We only got two services left. Ron, what happened? <laughs> it looked like this insurmountable amount of nine service or ten services in nine days. I'm going, wow, we're having church apparently till Jesus comes back. And now it's two days. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess if he's coming back, he's going to have to hurry. <laughs> but he's going to find faith in the earth, right? He's finding faith because he's going to find faith here. Amen? Hallelujah. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming out.